So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, my journey into Preact. So I am currently developing a really, really small widget uh, that is going to live in a lot of websites. So I had to find a way to make it really small. So after I saw that Uber was announcing that they did their mobile website using Preact and it had only 50 kilobytes, I thought it was ideal. Uh, actually, my widget now has only 25 kilobytes, so it's even smaller than I thought. Um, but we'll talk a lot about sizes now. Okay, so who am I? <laughs> I'm, um, I, I basically got into web development for, from founding my startups. I founded a couple of e-commerce and entertainment startups. Um, I, uh, I started around 2011 and since then I've pretty much coded every day. It's just really addictive. <laughs> I currently call myself a front-end architect and the reason for that is what I most like to do and what I most do is set up architectures for the front end that scale and that junior developers enjoy working with. Yeah, it happens, it can happen. <laughs> really, it, anyway, but that's not about th what this talk is gonna be about. Um, I'm also a mentor for people uh, learning to code or launching startups, so if you have any questions about this later on, feel free to hit me up on Twitter or anywhere. Like, yeah, I really like to take questions around this. Um, recently, I've been very interested in AI and blockchain because I think it's the technologies that are going to mostly impact our lives in the recent future. And I'm very disappointed with the lack of sci-fi movies, but I, I think most, most of us are. Um, so what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to tell you when I think we should use Preact, in my personal opinion, um, how different it is from React. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the communities and tools from my experience. And I'm going to tell you what you should not do in, in uh, Preact. So um, when to use Preact? Uh, in my opinion, uh, Preact should be used when you're making really small websites. Like imagine you're making a website and you say, oh, that's really simple. I should just use jQuery. Don't use jQuery. Use, use Preact because, yeah, like, you, you, you know, if you know how to use React, you know how to use Preact. And, and it's really small. If you want to keep the website small, it, it, it renders incredibly fast. Um, and also, like, like, yeah, the reason why I'm using it for embeddable widgets. Because, you know, you're going to give an overhead to your clients. So the smaller it, it is, the better. And now, um, to really show you some data about why um, Preact is small, we can see here this little com comparison I did on Sunday. And as we can see, this is just like, this is a, just a really... They're all really boring apps, but this is just like a little HTML file that just has a div and this inside, or an H1 or something. And um, it, as you can see, there's nothing, so no kilobytes, just this. And it, it basically renders around a bit after two seconds. Ah, this is using a slow 3G, which, so that it, it amplifies the effect. So it renders a, a, a bit before three seconds, and with Preact, this is the Preact right here, and it has only 9.6 kilobytes. And with the create, oh, oh, sorry, I forgot to tell you guys something. This is rendered, this is generated with Preact CLI, and this is rend, uh, generated with Create React App. They are the most used CLIs for both the, the frameworks. Um, and what I did is I removed all the routing, and I removed all the CSS to try and make it as similar as I could. Um, so yeah. With React, as when you start a new project in React, you, you immediately come with 112 kilobytes, which again is completely okay. I'm, I, I don't think that all apps have to be incredibly tiny, but yes, it is true. You start with nine kilobytes in, uh, in Preact. So that's really, really interesting how smaller it can be. Um, so, and how different is, uh, is it from React, which is actually what I'm here to talk about. And what I have to tell you is that it's not. Um, the, the syntax is exactly the same uh, because what basically uh, Preact, um, Preact does is it, it uses most of what Pre React already has, but it strips away a lot of bindings and uses native bindings from the browser. So yeah, it's, um, it's really similar. Um, so, but even though it is really, really similar, there are actually some small... Th L let me say this. If you take a a React app and put it into Preact, it's pretty much going to work. However, there are some things that after that you can do that are very interesting. Like for example, you can use class again, which is something I never understood why React took it out. And um, you can pass props and state directly into your render function. 
So if, if you see, I have here the state, and I don't have to do this.props or this.state. I can just pass them in like this, and they're immediately accessible, and it makes the code a bit cleaner, in my opinion. So that's like a little plus it has, but yeah, it's basically React. Um, now, about the communities uh, that I experienced, um, I, I, I interacted a lot with these three that we see here, uh, Preact, Preact CLI, and Redux Zero. Um, and I got to say, they, w they are as active and proactive as React and as Angular and honestly any other main front-end framework, um, front-end uh, community at the moment. Um, and yeah, um, they're quite good. Like, I, I, wouldn't, I would say that in terms of community, they're all quite good. Um, and now, if you guys are going to be working with, um, with uh, Preact, one thing that I, I at least prioritize a lot when I work in Preact is making everything really small. So with this in mind, uh, I would recommend something, for example, like uh, uh, import cost for VS Code, which kind of makes you really neurotic about having everything really small, which I don't know, like I kind of made this my objective when I was using Preact. Just make sure everything is really small. So at the same time, using bundle explorers all the time, all the time test uh, the size of things because you know, it's really easy to import a library and then it's bigger than, than everything you even had there before, including the, the framework code, your own code. Um, and another thing that is interesting to note is that you can use React DevTools. So like pretty much everything that works with React also works with Preact. So that's also a really nice thing to start. Um, one last thing I would like to tell you um, is, um, is show you, um, oh no, wait, sorry. Okay, one thing's first. Um, another thing I have to tell you is about Preact CLI, um, how amazing Preact CLI is in getting you started in a project. So I'm sure that many of you had, uh, have already heard about lazy loading. Basically, this is the ultimate form of lazy loading. Um, I'm not going to get into too much detail um, about how it happens, but the community has, m from my under understanding, pretty much agreed that this is the best form to do lazy loading. And when you use Preact CLI, it just works out of the box without any configuration. You actually don't need to look at the configuration files at all. It just, it just works. I mean, of course, you need, you're going to have to be aware of what not to, to run if you, the code is going to run on the, s on the server. But besides that, it, um, it works really well. I was, I, I, I was really impressed with this, but actually for my use case, I did not have to use this because I, I'm just serving. Um, I actually have the widget and a super small app and the super small app I serve from a CDN. But anyway, this is really interesting. And I think for anybody that um, likes server-side rendering, they, they, you have this from the beginning. And this also works with from delivering as a static website. Um, OK, so now, what not to do in Preact? So basically, Preact is React. So the best practices and, and bad practices that, that go in, in React also come here. So the one thing that I would add, and probably understood this is a bit my personal opinion, but is to not import large, large libraries. I, I made up this rule of thumb of 10 kilobytes, and the reason for that is that Preact itself the thing you get when you render pre, uh, your app from Preact CLI is around nine kilobytes. And I don't know, but I feel uncomfortable having a library that it's bigger than the framework. So I just did that rule. And I'm going to show you here uh, an example I ran into. So I cannot, I cannot do front end without Redux. It's just that way it doesn't scale for sure. And I, with Redux, it's really, really easy to work with and scale. So I had to use Redux. So um, I initially tried to use Preact Redux, and what I noticed is that it basically adds 50 kilobytes, even though it's Preact Redux and it, it comes from the Preact community, I guess. So this, this little thing here is Preact, and this is Preact Redux. This is like Redux, and this is Preact Redux. So like, I was a bit shocked when I saw how much it, it, it increases the size. So then I went looking around, I and I found this other library called Redux Zero. And yeah, with that, it already only has 7.4, which is less than the 9 that uh, Preact has. So I managed to maintain uh, my app size really small. And yeah, and this is how I managed to achieve now only 25 kilobytes for a widget, which is smaller than Uber's. So yeah, that's awesome. Um, 
but yeah, I'm sure theirs is, theirs is much more complex. Because like what ends up happening with, uh, with uh, Preact is that, and, and oh, and this is just like a little starter. It has like, this would be my code and there's nothing here. It just has like a little div saying boring app. That's why it has nothing. But what happens with Preact is that as, as you start writing code, your part really increases a lot. You will start noticing how big your code can get. And even if you have like no dependencies, if you make your code really extensive, your app is going to get big. Which is another reason why I think it's okay to use React if you have like a complex app anyway. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, this is what I had to tell you today. Um, however, if you guys have any more questions, I'm here to answer. Uh, feel free, maybe this can be a bit more interactive. Because I probably didn't cover a lot. So yeah, yes. Oh, my widget. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I didn't, tell, I didn't say that. So um, I'm working for this company called Agate. And basically, we are solving micropayments for bloggers. So imagine you have a blog and you want to create some premium blog posts. And when your users go to those premium blog posts, they can pay via our, our app, our little widget. It, it prompts you to unlock the premium content and takes care of everything. So yeah, it's going to be present in a lot of blogs. And these blogs need to load really fast. Thus, super tiny widget. <laughs> Have you used any testing tools with React, such as Jest or Chai and Mocha? Um, I, I actually was not doing this. Shame on me, I know. <laughs> but uh, uh, I also could say a lot about that. I believe in testing everything you do in Redux and everything else I don't. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, no, I didn't, but I know they have support from it, for it. So yeah, if, you, if you're looking to test, they, they they go well with tests. Okay, I guess I guess that's it. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs>